On this, the April 1st, 2024 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, we look at an update to the situation in and around Baltimore. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So I got two updates regarding the situation in Baltimore. One of them is the opening of a new channel. This is going to be a much shallower draft channel. You cannot bring large ships through, but at least allow some barge and uh, tug traffic to head through along with smaller vessels. And the second regards the unified command that is underway in Baltimore. I received a comment back on a question I had. I'm going to give you both of those. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So the captain of the port is preparing to establish what's called a temporary alternative channel on the northeast side of the main channel of the key bridge for commercially essential vessels. Quote, this will mark an important first step along the road to reopening the port of Baltimore, said Captain David O'Connell, federal on-scene coordinator. By opening this alternative route, we will support the flow of marine traffic into Baltimore. This channel will be marked with lighted A's. You see the Coast Guard laying there right now. It'll have a controlling depth of 11 feet, a 264-foot horizontal clearance, and a vertical clearance of 96 feet. So this is what it's going to look like. On the left here, this is marine traffic. You can see the dolly here in its position, still aground up uh, forward, impaled basically on the southern uh, pillar of the uh, bridge. Here you can see Fort Carroll. Uh, this is the same thing, this uh, hexagonal shape right here. This is Fort Carroll. So what they're gonna do is mark out a channel. This depth you're seeing on the marine traffic is in meters. I apologize, that's the, the measurement they use, basically times three uh, is what you see. And what they're gonna do is loop up here. You can see the Coast Guard cutter working this area. It will come up here, loop through here, and then come down over here, probably on the other side of the red Fort McHenry Channel buoy number six, and link in here, and this will give you the path toward uh, Curtis Bay and the other area. So this will provide a little go around. You are not getting deep draft vessels in this port. The air draft clearance is too much, and more importantly, the draft 11 feet isn't a lot, but tugs and barges and small boats are going to be able to transit here and i think that's a big win right now for the port of baltimore at least you can see some movement of coal sugar salt some bulk materials in even some containers potentially cars you can move some goods to some of the terminals that are now blocked so the second thing i want to talk about is an email i sent to the unified command authority asking for clarification about it so in the statement today i read to you they talked about the fact that Captain O'Connell, U.S. Coast Guard, who is the captain of the Port of Baltimore, is the federal on-scene coordinator. And it raises a question for me, is like, okay, who's in overall command of the incident? Typically, under incident command systems, you can have a single person who oversees this mass incident. Did a video the other day where I talked about it, I have the link up here, talking about who's in charge. So I sent my letter off or my email off this morning asking that question. Who's in charge? Is it the captain of the port? Is it the Army Corps of Engineers? Is it the Navy uh, supervisor of salvage? Who is it? And in, in defense of the unified command theory, I got, a, I got an email back pretty, pretty darn quick, actually. They sent this back. There are multiple agencies acting side by side in the event, ultimately initiating the unified command. And it goes on here and lists them. Coast Guard, Army Corps of Engineers. Maryland Department of, uh, of the Environment, the Maryland Transportation Association, Wilt O'Brien's, who I'm not sure is, I'm assuming this is a contractor involved here, and Maryland State Police, very respectively, the Key Bridge Joint Information Center. So I am a volunteer firefighter, just completed my ICS 300, 400 level recertification. And what they are using here is what's called a unified command approach. In other words, they're not putting one person in charge, but everybody's in charge. Basically, each of the different agencies operate together and then coordinate their actions. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say it again. I disagree with this approach because you really need one person in charge to coordinate all the different actions here. It's great to have a unified command, I understand that. But I disagree on this incident because of a whole myriad of competing factors that are at play here. You need that one person who can say yes and no. Uh, when you have committees, when you have groups, there are always the issues with fighting for resources and you have a myriad of different groups that are looking at different objectives here. 
opening the port, the ship, you name it. There's a whole series of different salvage going on here. You have Resolve Marine, who's at play here. You have Donjon. You have Scancia. You have all these different entities that are playing in the salvage. You have all these different federal and state uh, entities that are playing in this balance. And listen, I understand that some of you are not enjoying that I'm saying this out loud. That's fine. You are more than welcome to contact me. I have plenty of contact information. If you want to call me at any time, you're more than welcome. My, my, my email, my contact information is on every one of my videos. If I'm getting something wrong or incorrect, you let me know. From what I understand that not everyone is enjoying what I have to say, well, uh, again, I am just reading the situation based on the material coming out. I'll add, add a third thing that came out today that I have a big issue with, is that NTSB announced they are doing no further press conferences. I think that is a huge mistake. They would never be able to do that for an air loss. Uh, you know, if you lost an airplane, they would be doing daily updates on their investigation where it's going. I think they need to be announcing that they're ruling things out. What caused this vessel to lose power? Was it fuel? That should be out, basically ruled out almost immediately because they should be able to test the fuel. If it's not fuel, if it, fuel is an issue, then we need to know about that. That needs to be out there for everybody to know. Uh, was there an issue in the, well, why did the vessel lose power? Was it control? Was it electrical? Obviously the ship knows it has power back. They got power back. So they know what made them lose power because they got it back. What is that issue? What caused them to lose power? And most importantly of all, did they ever lose rudder control? Because it did, appears they did. When the power went out, they lost rudder control. But when the generators came back, when the power came back on, whether it was the emergency ship's uh, generator or the ship's service diesel generators, and there's multitude of them, came back online, they should have had helm control. In other words, they should have had enough helm control to pilot themselves out under the bridge at eight knots and get on the other side without striking it. Why is it this ship lost control? And I understand there's a long, laborious process. They don't want to, you know, you know, taint things, but they should have at this point questioned the entire crew, the pilots, have a good information here, whether this is mechanical, electrical, human at, at all. Because again, we have ships going out of ports right now with infrastructure that it's in as similar shape to the key bridge as it existed, which means that there could be dangers for other ships. And I think we should know this. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until our next update or a next story hits, this is Sal signing off.